one, all right? Um, these are all very good. Here's this lady and Michael Phelan, and very, very good sources. Um, okay, editing. Um, as I say, go back to your old stuff. Uh, and if you've taken a shot within the past year, convert it, enter it in next month's competitions. Uh, you might be surprised at what you have. I was. Um, okay, so you uh, see the potential, and then you start working it up. And it does take, in most cases, it takes a lot of careful editing to get the best out of a, um, a black and white. Because again, the, you, you, you're challenged to bring out the components that may not be as obvious as they should be. Lots of different ways of doing it. Um, I use Lightroom. Most people use, use Lightroom. If you don't have Lightroom, but you have Photoshop, you can do it in Photoshop using uh, um, color channels. Um, complicated. Well, Lightroom nasty. is actually built into Photoshop. Exactly. I was just going to say, if you, if you have Photoshop, don't, well, unless you want to use Photoshop <laughs> layers and masks, fine, you can. But use the uh, Adobe Camera Raw aspect of Photoshop. It's the same as Lightroom, basically. It's, it's, yeah. and it's much easier. Much easier. Okay. Um, okay, now this, uh, we'll, we'll, <coughs> these, these are pretty much the, the, the steps I'm going to follow in this little demo. Um, but, uh, that'll, and that'll be in the PDF. Uh, so, to remind you of what, to, and I say, this is just our uh, late room and then our uh, set. I mean, uh, Gene is going to show you uh, some other things that I don't cover here. And uh, and then Jay will show you a few other things. And if anybody else wants to come up and, uh, and show what they do, I really encourage it. Because, as I said, there's a dozen different ways, a hundred different ways of doing some of these things. Okay. All right, right row. Okay, that's not the one I want. Here's the one I want. This was a uh, Jim uh, Ferguson, maybe others will remember this day up at the, we got permission to go up at the Barbersville Ruin. You, you right. kept the cord. <coughs> Convert that to black and white. <laughs> Blue and white. Okay, this was the day. We got permission to go up to the Barbersville Ruins to do some light painting, and uh, this is a great, great time. And the weather was perfect, and everything was wonderful. This is one of the many photos I took. Um, uh, setting the camera up on bulb, uh, keeping a shutter, and then running up and shining lights all over the building. Um, and we got some, some decent stuff. Um, but I thought, well, let's see, this, this might be better in black and white, because the color, the color doesn't do much, really. It, it doesn't, you can't say that the color adds a lot. We know skies are blue, big deal. Um, bricks are red. So nothing going on here. So, um, what you would do with a, with a starting off would do, be doing anything you normally would do with a photograph at, at the be very beginning of developing your photo. So you go to develop, go to basic, and uh, again, this is my way. Um, you may have other ways, but generally, what you want to do with whether it's color or black and white, you want to try to find the white point point at which you start losing data on the bright end and the black point where you start losing data on the dark end of the spectrum. I uh, hold your alt or control key down and move this up until you get these things here. I'm not going to worry about it over, on the, over the left there because that's just, we're going to go to the black and white and you'll see it doesn't matter. Um, and then blacks. It, it brings out the most uh, in the image. It really increases the contrast, and, uh, and you can apply a texture and everything else at this point. But at this point, what I usually do. Oh, and the other thing is, right away on a building like this, you want to transform it 
uh, and get rid of that distortion, right? See how it's distorted? Going like this, okay, easy to do, vertical, and line up the one side with the grid, and click and string crop, and you've got it. Okay, now the sky's too big, got a lot of sky we don't need. Oops, unlock. There's my color shot. All right, let's convert to black and white. Go back to basic, click this, treatment, color, black and white. All right, now you can start messing around with things that really add punch to a, to a black and white. Texture is a big one. Clarity is, is also big. Clarity is, is great. Watch what happens with clarity. Now, usually with color, you add too much color, clarity, it starts really looking funky, uh, really. The colors just go weird. With black and white, you can just go crazy. It's wonderful. Same thing with texture. Texture is a finer rendition of clarity. It just brings out, it's, it's, it's essentially sharpening. And um, it basically, what was the slider in Structure. Superflex? Structure. Structure. And remember the Nick program? Um, uh, they had a structure slider. That's what texture does here. You don't need that anymore. It just brings out amazing detail. Okay, now we're getting there. So Actually, the dehaze does too. What's that? Pull around with the dehaze. The dehaze. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Seth's middle name. Is dehaze. <laughs> you can yeah, yeah. See, you can. Well, you can just pull around like crazy and. Uh, I'll just leave it that way. Okay. Um, now another thing you can do is tone curve down here. I don't use this very often with color, hardly ever, but with black and white, it's, uh, you can sort of just pick out the highlights, go brighter or darker, not much going on there, not much light. You can make bright, if you want to brighten the sky just by itself, that's good. The darks, you can brighten, just pull around until it's just what you feel is right. Okay. So that's it. Now, you, you can say, okay, well, that's pretty good. You've got, uh, you've really brought out the texture. You can see the bricks and everything looks, looks much better here than it does there. Um, then when you've got that done, it's very often it's good to go in with, that's, these were all global changes. They apply to the whole, the whole image. You can go in with your brush and say you want to you want to brighten up these bring out more detail in the chimneys so you go in here and sort of brush in more detail just to bring them out a little bit maybe up in the tree a little bit I don't know okay and then you can of course do as, do as much as you want and, uh, okay. what are those rays in the sky Jerry? Hmm? No, 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 not the stars. Look at the, you, you got that's the sunset. Yeah, this is, uh, that's the sunset. Yeah, there's not much you can do. You can darken that down, but it's not that. Yeah, but you see the, the definite limit yes, of the rays. Yeah, it's the sunset. Yeah, sunset. That's, that's right. These are the rays. I like this. Yeah, I, I, and I tried to bring those out, <laughs> and you can. Um, here's a little trick. Um, okay, I'll get a new brush here. Zero it out. Okay, you can. Um, if you hold your shift key, you can make a straight line with the brush. Oops. Wrong <laughs> <laughs> way. Wrong way. Wrong way. Actually, no, no, you click like once. This. Yeah, there you go. There. Now that's a little extreme. <laughs> but if you wanted to pull around. With a fair crack. Yeah, that's uh, right. and, and also yeah. feathering. If you, can, uh, you can increase the, fe the feather, which is the softness of the edge. Anyway, if you wanted to mess around with those, you could, but I'm not going to. Okay. Um, okay, so we're done with that. Another thing you can do, uh, not necessarily in this shot, but if you have a landscape um, or a seascape <coughs> with you know, bright waves, and you might have a little bit of brightness here and there, but you have a lot of dark area, that just sort of 
dies, you can use this, and I've seen this done. Um, one photographer I found online just does this to an exquisite uh, degree. Use the radial filter. Here's the radial filter That's it. tool right here. Radio, and you can sort of go in here, and you can put out a little sort of oval or whatever. Well, you notice, though, that all the changes took place I brighten it up. Everything brightens up except the array I want it to. I don't know why they did it this way, but you go down here and do invert, and that that should be the default in my mind. Because why would you put a circle to avoid changes? You want to put a circle to make changes. But anyway, that's Adobe for you. Anyway, you can move this thing around, and uh, you can hold Alt G and change just one part of it. All kinds of things that actually can create these little patches and if you and if you really feather it, it can look very not like a little natural patch of light, especially on a landscape. Try it, you'll love it. Yeah. I use that all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really, really a great tool. Okay. And uh, I could darken the this down a little bit, but that's enough for that. So anyway, uh, the list of those things, um, is on that sheet if you want to try it yourself or just do it any way you, any way you want. Now, Jean, any questions about this process? Is it the same as like the old burn and dodge, essentially? Um, yeah, for dodge and burn is what you're, that's what you're doing with the brush. Dodge and burn is an old term from dark, from wet dark room. Brightening and darkening, and that's what your adjustment brush does. That's what Photoshop does. In, in Photoshop, you have the same tool, but again, um, the radio and the uh, graduated filter uh -huh. uh, applies the same things that you can with a brush, but it does it very uniformly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think you know, of, if I want a paint <coughs> roller versus a brush. But you yeah. can't those feathery kind of uh, brush sizes, you know, the feather. Yeah, you can. It, it's creature yeah, feathering. Yeah, the, the softness of the edge. Yeah, yeah you can, it's it's far easier and far, than it used to be. I mean, God, you know, it used to take Ansel Adams, you know, months, years sometimes to make a final print, and now you can do it in five minutes. Um, anyway, and get exactly what Ansel got. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, one other thing I wanted to show you regarding color. Um, remember I talked about, we talked about this one where we could change the sliders and turn uh, a flat image into a row. Here's another example. These are uh, red alder trees in the west coast of Vancouver <coughs> Island, in British Columbia. And it's okay, the color, uh, it, the trees stand out nicely in color because they um, have a, because the green in the background sort of defines them and separates them. But when you convert it to black and white, it sort of just dies, right? Just everything's flat, nothing stands out. But there is there is some white areas. There, uh, there are, are some white areas, there are some dark areas. So there's something here to work with. Uh, we can do all the things that we did with the other one, uh, texture, clarity, okay, that helps a little bit. Black and white point, maybe blacks. Down a little bit. Okay, but here's where the uh, the magic is, and these sliders here. And you have the same thing in Photoshop. Um, but what you can do here is these these. Remember, in the old days of black and white film, you put color filters in the front of your lens mm -hmm. to either enhance or darken or lighten specific colors. Uh, now you don't do that. You do it here. Um, <laughs> So you can start pulling around with these spiders. If there are any reds in here, they'll be accentuated by moving it. You can see that, but it doesn't do much. You just pull around. Oh, that's, so you, can, you just pull around until you see something that works. It's green. Remember the green separated the trees, right? Darken it down. And suddenly the trees pop out. Now this may not be the best example, but you can see what I'm Doing. By darkening the greens, uh, the trees just move to the front, and you've got your separation. So this is a great tool also. Arc with nothing much there. 
This blue slider would be great for blue skies because it can darken them down or brighten them up to create contrast with the foreground. For some reason, purple brings up the trees nicely. And so it's a way of, of getting that separation uh, that you don't get just by converting it. So anyway, that's a great tool to use. That, uh, that, this panel won't appear until you convert to black and white. In I, color, I think it appears in color also, mm -hmm. Jerry. If you keep it in color, it, you'll it, see it's it. different yeah, in yeah. color. Yeah, 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 but you just have you, you have yeah, the same, yeah, you have yeah, the same yeah, control yeah, yeah, over yeah, all yeah, the yeah, different colors. It's, it's not the same thing. Oh, I bet you it is. No, it's no, not. It's not. It breaks it down into hue, no, no. saturation, and illumination. Anyway, illumination. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. This, 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 this is, is changing the, the same, illumination. It's the same yeah. colors here. If you just yeah. change the illumination yeah. on another panel, you get the same So, Gene, you want to show the thing that you... All right. 